what love everybody so it's your sister Felicity Love here and uh, I have not posted um, a video lately about my efforts to spread love through the arts um, in a couple of weeks I, I feel like I did post the last one and it was about me driving to um, Selma Alabama so y'all know we talk about a lot of stuff in history, but how many of y'all actually go to the places where these events took place to just kind of show your children, teach your children, pass this down to your kids? When we talk about Black History Month, it definitely should be an everyday thing and for us realizing that Selma is a place that still exists and we can still go down there and immerse ourselves in their culture and their history of you know, of the black, black history, history of our people. And so what I want to do is just kind of give you a brief um, announcement about tomorrow. My, my amazing, talented young king, Dynamic Ray and I will be sharing um, our mother-son tribute and another creative piece. A mother-son tribute is entitled Pain, Passion, and Purpose. And that was done in memory of Brother Cornelia Scott that I actually met on Facebook. I've never met him in, in person and never got a chance to. But he passed away in 2019. But before he passed away, I met him in, in the same year. I met him the same year that he passed away. And um, he did a lot of work with families who were um, gun, well, just violent survivors, or gun violence survivors, but it didn't matter how they died, um, their loved one died, they were suffering the pain, and it was a lot of mothers that he was working with, and so that that's a term that he used on his show, and um, he, he interviewed a lot of mothers and fathers, and uh, those in the community who had been moved from pain to passion and purpose, and so he was moved and um, he was a survivor. He was survivor of his son was shot, but he lived. So he felt the need to create um, around that issue. Like that, that became his platform for motivating mothers and standing behind and supporting their efforts. But the goal was, if, if anything, was to paint a picture or um, share their stories and let them share their stories so that others would be motivated and inspired to also be moved from pain to passion and purpose. So, what a better name. There was, you know, it's just what, what, what a name be fitting. Is there a better name for our peace? So, Mamie and Emmett's story was, it's no different from the stories that our mothers are faced with today. The only thing, and which is the saddest thing, is that most of the mothers who are losing their children today, unlike Mamie, whose son was killed due to racial violence by someone outside of our race, but that's what we've been, you know, been learned. We've been um, accustomed to thinking that um, the racial violence um, was worse or racial violence was the worst thing that could ever have happened to us. But in my humble perspective, the worst thing that's happened to us is the, the generation of children that Dr. King fought to have um, equality and to experience a life of a peace and, and um, equality, that those, that generation of kids grew up and started perpetuating a cycle of violence that was once forced on us as a people and they're perpetuating that violence and and that it's brothers it's brothers and sisters that's causing the pain on brothers and sisters so not that it makes it even even worse but it's just to me it is terrible it is it is very much terrible because it is it's as if when dr king was um taken from us that someone dropped the ball somebody's generation dropped the ball in teaching teaching that love and, and and even that village 
So you, it's either you forgot to teach love to the children, or as a village, you stop responding and you stop moving in love and unity. So two things probably happen, and now as a result, we have young people who have resulted to violence instead of nonviolence as their response to situations. And I say response to trauma, response to losing loved ones to violence, response to losing, losing loved ones in general, response to um, poverty, having lack, inequality. We've, we have, for some reason, not passed on to our children the importance of responding nonviolently. This is what Dr. King worked at, fought for, and died for, and yet those of us who've experienced the freedoms that Dr. King and all of those who marched with him and all of those who fought before him, everything that they fought for, for us, is as if we have taken those freedoms for granted. And so now we are experiencing the pain of our, of our, of what's going on. It's just a lot of pain that is self-inflicted. It really is self-inflicted. And if we really understood what the Willie Lynch letters were about, and, and how they were geared towards um, setting us up for failure. If we actually understood that, then a lot of our young people would still be alive today. I, I will not tell myself that God makes no mistakes and that in saying that he allowed for that to happen because Jeremiah 29 11 said that he knew the plans he had for us, plans to give us an expected in. That's not expected in if someone takes your life, if it's your own brother in the same race. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't be anybody. But it just seems like as long as it's not, you know, somebody from another race, we don't seem too much care that these young people are no longer with us, no longer um, being able to experience the freedoms that our people fought for. They're, they're not here. And, um, so it's, it's just really concerning to me that we, especially in the city of Birmingham where I'm from, that we find so many murders, so many murders, so many, um, just so, so much degradation. And, it, and it's perpetuated by the hands of our own people. So that's a long story. Um, I'm only going to get this video 10 minutes. So I just want to say that if we truly knew our power if, if we knew our history we wouldn't have time or the mind to to basically repeat that same history just because we think the person that's perpetuating the crime is darker skinned it does not mean that the evil ploy uh, everybody say the devil the evil ploy of those who were working against us, the oppressors, did not prevail. Yes, it has prevailed. We've done nothing to to show those people who meant us harm that we were not going to allow that to happen. We really have allowed ourselves to walk right into the trap to do the opposite of what Dr. King was fighting for. It's, it's just the biggest slap in the face. And many of um, our people um, that used to go to church every Sunday didn't even understand why they was going. And many of them didn't even understand what Dr. King was teaching, what he was modeling, not just preaching. Many of us spend countless moments preaching and trying to get everybody to follow Jesus or to, or to worship Jesus, but we don't spend that much time following his actions, his walk. And it was simply in love, meeting one another's needs and just being your brother's keeper, feeding the poor, and just helping those who need help. We've stopped all of that. And every Dr. King day, we continue to celebrate him. What a slap in the face. What a slap in the face of Dr. King and all those who died. To Addie, to Carol Robinson, to Johnny Reese, John Earl Reese, and um, Johnny Robinson, and 
Cynthia Wesley, all those young people who lost their lives in the civil rights movement so that our generation of people could be free. And the only thing that's stopping us is us. Us. Nobody else. Us. It's, um, there is no justice, even when that happens to us. Because it's just us. So until we recognize our own power that Dr. King was, was showing us, then Dr. King got on his knees and he prayed, which means, but he was a pastor. And the whole goal is, and to let you know is, he was a believer and he didn't just tell us to go uh, worship Jesus. He he taught us how to be moved. He taught us the power that we had. He taught us what we had to do. And then those, back in the day, those who had ears, who had a clean heart, received it. It was just that simple. And now we just don't understand that we are perpetuating the same cycle. I mean, what are we doing? And I often hear people say that Black Lives Matter and why are we counting? First of all, get back to what does that even mean? It doesn't even, even mean if you don't even know who you are, if you don't know your history, it's not being taught in the schools. You go, we're not teaching it in the church. We're definitely not teaching it at home. So therefore, you're going to be repeating stuff, and we are repeating it. And we just why we because it doesn't look like what we were used to. All oh, the white men are not choking us, hanging us, and they're not doing it anymore. We don't. They don't need to do it. Our young people and our our people who grow up to be adults who did not understand was not taught love. They are doing the same thing. They were not taught brotherly love. They were not taught brotherly love. And that is that is exactly what is missing. So my call to action for mothers, my call to action is for the mothers who have birthed these children in pain. And then in the end, somehow become disconnected with your young your young person who is pulling a trigger and who is causing pain on other people. There is something that needs to happen for those mothers and for those other mothers who who do know their power already i just pray that they are able to get the village behind them that they need to continue helping their children reach their greatness um never such thing as when your children are grown they don't need their mother they need their mother and i'm calling out mothers it is up to the mothers and now the fathers were raised by mothers the fathers were born of mothers. So I'm just calling the mothers. Because all the mothers have a direct um, line to the youth in some way. And maybe you can't reach your own child. But there is somebody that you know that can. I know that there is a village that you have. You have a grandmother. I know you have a grandfather. I know you have a teacher for your child. You need to stay connected with that village because you cannot do this alone. There is, they always say it takes a father to raise a son. But the thing is that he cannot do that alone. So that does not take away from the mother doing her part. That nurturing part is there. If the mother did her part to nurture her child then and, and teach them that love and teach them that what love look like, then they will more than likely be more apt to respond in love to their brothers and sisters. We should teach our children to communicate our frustrations. We should teach our children how to respond to their brothers and sisters of another mother the same way they respond to their brothers and sisters of the same mother. If you will not kill your brother, if you, want, if you do not want harm to be upon your mother, then you, sh you certainly should allow that for anybody else's mother and anybody else's brother. So if the love should be redefined as whatever you want for yourself, you want for somebody else. I'm tired of us waiting for somebody else to come down, give us the money to do what? It is on us. When we say that love is the answer, it simply means it is up to us. The smallest thing that you can do, like the smallest thing that you do when you're somebody die. We often wait until somebody die and then we show up at the funeral and we're there for the family. But guess what? If we did that before that child died, Many children would be alive and well, not in prison. And just because they didn't die and they went to prison, it doesn't mean that it's not a tragedy. It's still a tragedy. 
Just because they didn't get hurt, if they got shot, it's still bad. We cannot become complacent. We can no longer be complacent. Love is truly the answer.